Recent modeling scenarios run by ECDC for the most recent rapid risk assessment on COVID-19 indicate that the potential burden of disease risk in the EU EEA from the Delta variant is very high in December and January. Unless public health measures are applied now in combination with continued efforts to increase vaccine uptake in the total population. Since the beginning of the year, we have seen a rapid rollout of vaccination programs in the EU EEA that successfully avert death, reduce hospitalization and transmission despite the emergence and continued dominance of the Delta variant, which is up to 60% more transmissible than the previously dominant variant Alpha. Because vaccines offer high protection against severe outcomes of COVID-19 infection, the forecasts are showing that a large number of COVID-19 hospital admissions will be unvaccinated individuals, in particular unvaccinated individuals in risk groups. The current average level of vaccination uptake in the EU EEA will be therefore insufficient to limit the burden of COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations over the winter month. And the countries with lower levels of vaccination are at higher risk. Increasing COVID-19 vaccination coverage in all eligible age groups, but particularly in the elderly, in the vulnerable, and in healthcare workers should remain the priority for public health authorities. Europe must close immunity gaps in the adult population and ensure effective and equitable coverage across countries and regions. Even in countries that have achieved good overall vaccination coverage, there are still subpopulations and age groups in which coverage remains lower than desired. There are still too many individuals at risk of severe COVID-19 infection whom we need to protect as soon as possible. With keeping in mind the priority to close the immunity gap, countries should also consider a booster dose for all adults 18 years and older with a priority for people above 40 years old. This is to increase protection against infection due to waning immunity, which could potentially reduce the transmission in the population and prevent additional hospitalizations and deaths. The booster dose is recommended at the earliest six months after completing a primary schedule. However, rolling out vaccination programs takes time and the effect of vaccines is full only after two weeks from the vaccination. Even then, immunized people can become infected and further transmit the infection, though to a much lesser extent than non-vaccinated persons. Therefore, especially in the context of dominance of the more transmissible Delta variant of concern, even in countries with high vaccination uptake, it is important to maintain or reintroduce non-pharmaceutical interventions. It is not an either vaccination or non-pharmaceutical intervention scenario, but it is rather a moment when both vaccination and personal protective measures are needed to minimize the spread of disease. Motivating people to follow these measures is even more important as we move towards winter and the festive season, when more people will travel and gather indoors. Therefore, the key elements for averting severe outcomes of the pandemic in the upcoming period are Closing the immunity gap The main priority should remain to increase vaccination coverage in all eligible age groups, but particularly in the elderly, the vulnerable, and in healthcare workers. Second, booster doses should be considered for all adult individuals, prioritizing persons above 40 years of age. And thirdly, 
maintain or reintroduce non-pharmaceutical interventions. We should not wait for cases to rise in order to introduce personal protective measures. I am aware that it requires a significant effort from public health authorities and the society at large to achieve this goal. But now is the time to walk the extra mile. We have safe and effective vaccines available. And until a larger part of eligible population is immunized, non-pharmaceutical interventions must continue to remain part of our daily routine.